my name is Calvin, and this is my 1993 Honda Civic hatchback. Uh, it has a Pandem kit from Jerry Kyoto. Yeah, it's my daily. Everybody can chase power, right? You can have 1,000 horsepower, but if you can't put it down and you don't have anywhere to actually take advantage of it, it will be honestly as slow as a car with about 150. I got the car actually from my brother. He bought it to replace his uh, stolen Corolla A86 and we bought it non-running. He dailyed it for a couple months, uh, passed it down to me, and at that point, it became a project between the two of us just to you know, test our skills. Picked up the kit, did all the suspension work, and then we even painted it at home, kind of just to show that things like this can be done at home on a pretty minimal budget, not a lot of skill involved. On you guys, welcome back to Roads Untraveled. This is my first time driving an EG Honda Civic hatchback. It's got a Pandem wide body kit on it, a B18 inline four engine under the hood from an Integra GSR, I believe. And this is going to be a lot of fun. Not very often, uh, to be completely honest, do I drive cars on the rain on this show because you know a lot of owners take pride in their uh, their vehicles, and a lot of them are show cars, and uh, they don't want to run the risk of spinning out, rock chips, rain in general, just for rust reasons, etc., etc. But Calvin has been kind enough to bring out his car for us to drive uh, and kind of prove that, hey, you can, there's VTech. Uh, you can actually drive a car like this every day in various weather conditions. So the key to the Honda game is weight reduction, at least in my mind, as a philosophy the Honda Civics of the world lend themselves very well to weight reduction to enhance, basically in order to enhance the front end grip. So when you're powering out of a corner, you don't lose grip, you don't get a lot of understeer, and when you dive into a corner, uh, you can actually like rotate the back end around very nicely. You know, it follows the front a lot nicer if there's a lot less weight. So Calvin's gone ahead and basically ripped out everything from the back of this car. Uh, the, <laughs> there's not a whole lot going on. While we're stuck behind this van, Calvin has actually been kind enough to lend me his driving gloves. Obviously for a uh, Alcantara or suede steering wheel like this, uh, over time the oils from your hands will wear these out very quickly. And that's a lot of the reason why older AMG cars and BMWs and stuff with Alcantara steering wheels, just as a street car, they wear out and they just become very disgusting after a couple of years. But if you want to save your Alcantara wheel, wear, wear driving gloves. That's what these wheels are made for. It's supposed to be for the track. So, ah, that's nice.
definitely quick enough. It's not what I would call torquey. No Honda is. Not without a turbo, at least, but... Let's be honest here. Most car enthusiasts will favor a rear-wheel drive platform over a front-wheel drive platform. So in order to make like a car like this really um, desirable for a driver who wants to have a lot of fun on the street, you got to make it dynamically like engaging. Which in terms of front wheel drive cars, I think Honda is the best at doing that. I think they have they have nailed that. I mean, in terms of Hondas, that's kind of that's kind of been their goal for the last, you know, 20, 30 years, 40 years even. Uh, to make a front wheel drive car as engaging and fun to drive on a street level as like a 240 would be. Because just inherently, getting the rear end out is a lot more fun in an, you know, when you can just power on and kick, kick out the rear end versus in a Honda, in order to get the rear end out, it's the opposite. You want to lift off to get the rear end out. So driving a front wheel drive car hard and then jumping into a rear wheel drive car is like worlds apart. Uh, with the car, we actually focused on getting the car to drive really well. So it was suspension, uh, just routine maintenance for an old car. Make sure that you know we could daily this every day without anything happening. And then we kind of sat down and thought about what we wanted to do with the car. And if it was just going to be something we sold off later on. We saw pictures of the kit at Tokyo Auto Salon. Um, and we decided that like we just we want to do this. We want to be the ones who do this here. You know, this is something that's really new. We didn't think it'd be something that it would be the most common, being that you know, the kit costs about the price of the car. Most people don't really want to put that kind of money into a Civic, but it ended up with a really, really cool car. Uh, the car has a B18C1 from an Integra GSR. Uh, should be stock, I've never actually opened the engine. Um, it has DC four to one headers, down to just a straight pipe through, ending in a five Zegan super lap exhaust. Uh, other than that, it has uh, rotor grid wheels, function form coilovers, uh, Integra disc brakes, and skunk to upper control arms, skunk to rear lower control arms, and skunk to rear uh, camber kit. Uh, the car has no interior in the back. Um, from the driver seat forward, everything's there, so you get the feeling of a comfortable daily. Everything in the back is gone. Um, and as far as reinforcement, we have uh, Kuzco door bars and the crossbar in the back there. Um, other than that, not very much uh, chassis, chassis bracing. So the kit, we ordered it um, from ICB Motorsports down in Arizona. Took about a week to show up and then we parked the car at home. We cut all the fenders, cut the quarter panels, sealed the car up. Um, took, you know, two, three days of just hours and hours of fitting it between, the, between my brother and I. And then we painted at home as well. It's actually painted with rattle cans, all rattle cans, um, with Duplicolor Honda paint, and done at home as well. So like, again, this is just to show that, you know, a car that can look half decent, uh, like it does right now, can be done at home with very limited budgets and not a lot of, uh, not a lot of skill to actually do, just a lot of hard work. <laughs> I can't even talk when I'm full throttle. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I literally can't talk. But the clutch is simple. It's very easy to rev match. V8 
very light to rev. Like it feels like it almost has a lightweight flywheel on it. Like to rev match is incredibly simple, very forgiving. It's another thing Hondas are generally good at. So loud, so loud. It just got this muffler actually, this exhaust system. Uh, imported from Up Garage in Japan. If you guys are JDM nerds, you probably know Up Garage. I don't believe he's taken it to a track yet, but that being said, when you look at this car from the outside, uh, his brother did the alignment, and you can immediately tell just from the front camber and all that, that yeah, this is, uh, this is prepared for track use. This is prepared for like a very aggressive turn in. It looks really sick. Congratulations, Calvin, on first off making a car that's, you know, useful. It's not useless. It's not a show car. It's not, you know, fully stretched and cambered and just like useless on the street, uh, which most of these riveted wide body cars are. It's got like a really nice meaty tire setup on it. I love it. I love it so much. You know, have enough gap in the fenders where it's never going to rub. It has not rubbed yet whatsoever. Uh, and it looks sick, it's low enough. Your car does not need to be slammed to look good. I think that is something that hopefully is coming back a little bit, but you know, people have lost their minds, especially going down to LA, like every car just like sits on the ground. I'm like, how do you drive it? That's not even fun, <laughs> you know? So. Uh, revs just past 7,000 RPM, which is plenty. VTEC comes on about 4,600. So you got some RPM to play with. Brakes are very taut. That's what I would call it. They're very tight. Good brake pedal feel. Wow. That is an aggressive alignment, sir. Like when you tell it to turn, uh, it, it's already turned before you can think about it. I think you, you'd have to go into driving a Honda with an open mind. At the end of the day, they're not known for big power unless you build them extensively. But to take it as it is, it's a light car. It'll handle however you throw it. And because it's front-wheel drive, it's really forgiving. So it's really good for someone who's not comfortable driving at a, high, at a quick pace. You can build a lot of skill just by knowing how to handle a car. You know, how much to turn in for a hairpin or how, much, how, much, how quickly it can go on a sweeper or anything like that. It'd be a good learning car. Yeah, once, you know, once I am sure that the car will hold up to a day at the track, I'd really love to take it to Mission just for lapping day to kind of see what I can do. Uh, I've never been to a track, so I want to kind of know what my skills are and to see, you know, how far I can push the car and where I could further improve it. Because it's my daily, I don't really know what the limitations currently are. Um, and it really, it'd be really nice to see how much better the car can be after dialing it in. Uh, I think my favorite thing currently is the sound. It is quite a bit loud, but um, the sound that you get when you hit VTEC, it's, it's, it's something else. Like it's probably my favorite part about it. I think uh, my next car that I really want to get uh, would be an R33 GTR. And if that's something that is out of my reach, I would really love to get an FD RX-7. Um, ideally, I want it to be a 20B, 20B NA, and uh, just daily that. And I think it'd be, I think it'd be really fun and it would, again, keep the same mentality of you don't need a lot of power and the, the car just has to be able to handle with not a lot of weight to push. I actually didn't like EGs. I, I liked EKs. Uh, my brother really liked EGs. He had one before. Um, I never drove any of the Civics. I just, based off of look, I liked the EK. After driving this, you know, I see why people like it. It's, it's a short wheelbase. You get a bit of oversteer if you push it too hard, um, but overall it's really balanced. And the look holds up. It, you know, it's distinctly an old car but the shapes are round enough that it uh, doesn't, doesn't look too dated. So Calvin's also went with upgraded rotors and calipers from an Integra. Uh, which are slightly bigger. The bite on these brakes is fantastic. Like the power definitely does not outweigh the brakes in this scenario. 
I like that there's a direction here too, you know. There's a direction that Calvin's went with the build. It's not just, hey, let's get let's get some nice parts, import them from Japan, and put together like a build that we can display on social media for clout. You know, this is a it's a thought out build, and there's a lot of good high quality parts in here. But here's the thing: high quality parts on their own does not make a good car. You need to put them all together in a package that makes sense for what you're trying to do with the car. And I think Calvin succeeded with that. I think this is pretty much ready to hit the track. Like Calvin, you should definitely hit up like Area 27 or even Mission or Vancouver Island Motorsports Circuit, whichever, just go get to a track day and you know, hit this up on, on a circuit because that's when you're really gonna squeeze out every last drop of performance and potential of not only the car, but of yourself as a driver. And when, when you have a build like this and you can squeeze out both of those things at once, then you really, that's when you become one at one with the car. Uh, which is, you know, I think everybody with a sports car or a build like this should strive for. And something that can not as easily be done if you have five, six, seven hundred wheel horsepower. That's a lot tougher to, uh, to get to the limit of both yourself and the car, but. Love these gloves though. I feel like I'm on a Japanese toge road right now. It's great. I guess the good thing about not having like 300 horsepower here is that it minimizes torque steer. You don't really have torque steer at all, which is very nice. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Big shout out to Calvin. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit me up on Instagram at Roads and Travel to hit up Calvin on Instagram as well. All those links will be in the description. Don't forget to check out our brand new line of engine code jet tags. We just dropped 50 new designs for a total of 30 engine code designs uh, on our jet tags. The link for that is in the description as well. Shop.roadsandtravel.com. We'll see you guys next time.